Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you. Let me pause here and address the critics that have asked why now. I ask you, why not now? Why not now when the smiling coast has lost its smile because of social divisions and fragmentations? Why not now when our sub-region is in disarray and political chaos? Why not now when we are at the verge of celebrating 59 years of nationhood? Your Excellency, your setting up the National Preparatory Committee made up of diverse Gambians from different walks of life, mostly from the non-state actors, demonstrates your commitment to ensuring that the national dialogue is not only inclusive, but fully participatory. Let me tell Gambia that when we were invited to be part of the National Preparatory Committee and we had our first inaugural meeting under the leadership of the Chief of Staff and the coordination of the Director of Press and Public Relations, we were allowed space to speak our minds, to deliberate on issues, Nothing was dictated to us. We met and our views were respected and adopted. And on every step of this journey, we have been fully consulted. That means that this process was not political. This process was consultative. This process was Gambia. And thank you, Chief of Staff and Director of Press, for giving that leadership and His Excellency for opening the space for us to participate. Let me thank the National Preparatory Committee for their commitment, their diligence, and their labor of love in making all this happen and the processes in the next coming days. It has been a phenomenal partnership between the government and a well-represented civil society. The Smiling Coast has lost its pleasant smile, for our land cries out as innocent blood has been shed over time. Our women die in labor. We bash and malign each other because of our diversity. Our young people continue to lose hope and embark on the suicidal journeys in the name of searching for greener pastures. Women are treated unfairly by us, the men. Rape and other crimes plague us. Victims of past human rights violations still have their tears not wiped away. This picture indeed may be bleak, but today, 
we can decide on this forward-thinking theme to put the blame game aside and give way to our collective responsibility in preserving the nation, safeguarding the state, and securing our resources. Today we gather on this sacred ground of the seat of power. We come together from diverse political persuasions, different faiths and ethnic groupings, from far and near, manifesting in real time the phrase in our national anthem, joining our diverse people and proving our brotherhood and our sisterhood. This coming together to have an open discourse on what affects us as a nation, in spite of our differences, presents us a unique opportunity for togetherness in forging a way forward for our beloved motherland. And it also gives us the much needed hope as citizens. It also presents us with the prospect of being an example of political maturity and accept acceptance in our sub-region. Therefore, inspiring hope and a new lease of life to a region that is on democratic life support. The ball is in our court. And I am confident that the invitation from His Excellency the President and the acceptance and presence of our political, our valued political leaders demonstrates our willingness as a people, our love for country, and our commitment to partnership for Gambia's progress. We will hear from you today. We will respect your opinions, appreciate your diverse perspectives, and glean from your wisdom. The nation is ready for this. Posterity beckons for greater and faster progress, for in togetherness we will surely move faster. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in closing, my welcoming remarks, I humbly submit for the approval of all political leaders and the nation at large, that from today we bury the tag opposition parties for I really don't understand who is opposing who or what. Holding divergent perspectives does not have to translate to opposition, but rather a complementary partnership. Men and women perceive life differently, but in the home, they are husband and wife, a team, a partnership for the good of all. Political leaders, see yourselves as partners for national progress. It may just be the right time to say that in the Gambia from today, we do not have opposition parties, but rather partner parties. Let us put the capital S back on the smiling coast. Let us be the shining star of democracy and a beacon of hope to other nations. Let us today allow little Gambia to shine forth. With this, I thank you for your kind attention. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me now to welcome our host, His Excellency, the President of the Republic, to give the opening remarks. Your Excellency. The key objective for this consultative meeting is to build consensus on holding and institutionalizing a National Dialogue Day, as recommended at the Force Public Forum held last year as part of the 58th Independent Day anniversary celebrations. As we look forward to celebrating the 59th anniversary of nationhood shortly, I have directed the committee to work on this national consultative forum 
to encourage and stimulate reflection and dialogue on selected national issues to promote, protect, and nurture peace and stability in our democracy. You may have realized that I have continually called upon my colleagues and fellow Gambians to come together and work in the best interests of the country. We dearly love. It is every citizen's responsibility to contribute towards our overall security, peace, and stability, be it in an official or private capacity, as public servants or bona fide citizens. My government holds the view that we should always try to forge national consensus on national issues that generate divergent views. So divergence must not result in enmity or disunity. Instead, it should be tapped into us a source of strength for us to tolerate, appreciate, and empathize with one another. In this way, all citizens would have the opportunity to contribute to sustaining peace and stability nationwide. Fellow Gambians and colleagues, it is absolutely necessary for us to come to terms with our collective responsibility to work together in the interest of our dear motherland and her people. This is the reason for strengthening our institutions, enforcing the laws of the land, and developing policies to guide our relationships. We are a decent people and a nation bound by destiny to live and work together. It must not surprise anyone, therefore, that the theme for this year's Independent Day's anniversary celebration is a call for us to respond to our collective responsibility of preserving the nation safeguarding the state and securing our resources. The task is for us as political leaders, stakeholders and citizens to find ways and means of positively translating this broad team into action. As leaders and public opinion influencers, we have a big stake in the nation. Thus, we also have the huge responsibility of striving to maintain peace and stability. Huge as it may be, we can achieve this by consciously avoiding and diffusing political or social tension through our public engagements with the people. Within both the public and private space, we occupy quite frequently. Moving forward, I call on all citizens who can do so to actively participate in the upcoming national dialogue with a view to reinforcing the social cohesion and tolerance that exists in our society. The thematic discussions are proposed to cover the political environment, religious tolerance, ethnic diversity, sovereignty, security, safeguarding the media and democratic space, irregular migration, and empowerment of our youth. Excellencies, honorable members, ladies and gentlemen, considering the important thematic areas identified for discussion ahead of the public forum for national dialogue, I must emphasize that it is our collective responsibility to preserve the nation as a people or fall together, safeguard the state or face instability, and secure our resources or live with a weak economy. We live in a world of uncertainty, instability, and insecurity. So, 
we must act collectively and resolutely ahead of any potential unrest or calamity. We are blessed in the Gambia with positive social norms and values that can always bring us together and help us to preserve our warm and brand as the smiling cause of Africa. With these remarks, I invite you all to objectively reflect on the team and sincerely share your thoughts to enrich the discussions and positively influence the outcome of the deliberations. I thank you for your kind attention. I'm stepping in here for my party leader, Honorable Fabakar Tomonjata, who doubles as the, the chairman and party leader of APRC, who is also in another function. That's why he was not able to be here. So I'm speaking on his behalf. This statement is from Honorable Fabakar Tomonjata, party leader of APRC. The team, our collective responsibility for preserving the nation, safeguarding the state, and securing, securing our resources is thus as follows. I extend my sincere gratitude to His Excellency President Adam Abaro for his initiative in, in convening and hosting this special national consultative meeting which marks the beginning of a subsequent national dialogues exercise focused on preserving our nation, safeguarding the Gambian state, and securing our resources. I am deeply honored to have been invited as a stakeholder to participate in this session. And I commend all political parties, lead political party leaders and stakeholders who have been invited to engage in this preliminary discussion. As the representative and party leader of APRC party, recognized as one of the principal stakeholders in this process, I am humbled by the trust and recognition extended to us by the president. The fundamental points outlined for deliberation reflects the present, the president and the, his government's aspiration for sustainable political stability, religious tolerance, social cohesion, ethnic diversity, national unity, uh, commitment to the state's dignity, and securing both our material and human resources for generations to come. Each of these sub-topics presents a wide array of ideas and proposals that cannot be thoroughly explored within the limited time allocated for discussion. Nevertheless, as, as, a, politi as a politician and leader of APRC party, I firmly believe that the Gambia, since independence, has been blessed with conducive characteristics, perhaps due to our uh, compact size and cultural diversity, which have settled us from many of the contemporary geo geo geopolitical crises playing around the third world nations. I strongly believe that since our independence, our politics has been anchored in, in sus sustainable peace and stability, and com com commemorate religious tolerance and a healthy ethnic diversity that fosters values such as intermarriage and peaceful coexistence. Mr. President, distinguished ladies, stakeholders, please allow me to uh, allow me at this juncture to send my profound gratitude to the pioneers of this course, the likes of late JC5, Edward Small, Lee Gaba Jahumpa, Sir Fariman Singate, MC Chan, Lee Sadada Kairaba Jaura, and the list continues for this visionary foresight to fight for the, for the cause of sovereignty state with ideas, strategies, and not with the use of force. Furthermore, as a political stakeholder, I will call on my fellow political players both here and in the diaspora to nurture the excellent spirit that has crafted the way for a sovereign state and a nation we all proudly call the Gambia, our homeland. I am with the strong conviction that as patriots and nationalists, it should be our collective responsibility in maintaining the strong foundation and utilize our God-given fac fac faculties to create, innovate, 
and participate in the productive as activities in upholding this brilliant team, our collective responsibility of preserving the nation, safeguarding the state, and securing our resources. As Gambians, we, are, we, can, we can do this by responsibly using the media, our political platforms, in our various capacities, as opinion leaders, religious leaders, traditional leaders, chiefs, civil society organization heads, and truths sincere and faithful participation in the upcoming national dialogue. Thus, we could be able to manifest the true meaning of our independent day celebration with the wordings for the Gambia, our homeland, we strive and work and pray. Distinguished participants, fellow political leaders, and the entire Gambia, I believe this team could have come at a, late, at a later time than this crucial and critical political and economic atmosphere we are currently faced with as a world, subregion, and a nation. However, with time constraint in mind, I would like to extend my gratitude to every participant in this national endeavor, and I thank His Excellency the President Adam Barrow and his government in, for facilitating this effort, and all I wish, the, and all, Above all, I wish the best of those entrusted with the finding of the right solution to address this crucial issue. I hope this verse meets our expectation, the subject, our collective responsibility for preserving the nation, safeguarding the state, and securing our resources. Thank you all for your kind attention. We thank the PPP, thank the, the president for the invitation given to us to attend such an important historic occasion. PPP is represented by our national president, Ajiduta Kamaso, and our national mobilizer, Uncle Sanu Suture, and myself. Mr. President or the chairman, this meeting is long overdue, but it's better late than never. We must be thankful for the relative peace that we enjoy in a region beset by political instability. Therefore, we must thank ourselves and the leaders for that protection. It's our collective responsibility to preserve, maintain, and protect that peace. While Gambians have the ultimate responsibility, the government must be seen to act impartially at all levels and at all times, including resource allocation, employment, etc. Civic education must be encouraged. Security of life and property be enhanced while the security sector reform must be expedited. Our peace is threatened, Mr. President. If we have difficulty in having food on our tables, we have a problem. There is a food insecurity, unaffordable basic commodities, petty thefts, corruption, unaffordable goods and services, high unemployment. Therefore, PPP thought it wise that some of the few priority areas that must be mentioned include investment, a premium investment in agriculture, horticulture, fisheries, and in the youth, and also assist the inter-party inter -party committee for much dialogue among parties. The Gambia government, the PP Gambia has gone through a lot of changes for better. From 2017 to date, we have seen the freedom we enjoy. Our National Assembly is function, functioning as we expected it, at least free of, of harassment. And the independent judiciary is also functioning as we expected. There is freedom of expression. So these are areas that cannot be overlooked. They are highly primed for Gambians to acknowledge 
the achievement we have since 2017. Mr. President, I will be very brief, but also our freedom also, we must look, closely look and watch events close in our, our closest neighbor, Senegal. Despite the fact this is not a, a forum for that, we are interrelated, we are together as one, one, one people. While as a government, you have limitations, and as a people, we have limitations. They are a sovereign country. We must be careful how we, how we attend to that, but also we should not let Senegal, if anything that we can do, to talk to anyone that can temper the, temper, the temperature, that will, that will be helpful to, to, for, to, to Senegal. We should not sit down and see challenges, face them, eventually we will feel it here. Whatever the government is doing, that's at their level. But it's a sovereign country, we are a sovereign country, but I, I, we believe that the president, our president, has close relations, personal relations with the president of Senegal. We believe that the telephone call, something can happen. If not, we as, as a collective responsibility of other parties, president can call us as a dialogue and see what we can do first, as neighbor, as family, and as friends. This is my, uh, thank you so much. Mr. President, I want to remind this gathering that this is not the Lancaster House talks that was led by politicians to work for the independence of the Gambia. These are talks that are meant for us to discuss and chart the way forward to better our democracy and to see how we can improve on the livelihood of the Gambian people. And we must also appreciate it is a very difficult task. Political dialogue is not easy anywhere in the world. I have witnessed it. I am one of those who led the ECOWAS parliamentarians and ECOWAS commission members to the political dialogue in Lome. And we've witnessed the political dialogue in Nairobi that led to the new constitution. We've seen what happened in Senegal from the 80s, from the Abdul Youth to the Wadas, how they worked on their electoral process through political dialogue. We've seen political dialogue in many parts of Africa and many parts of the world. If anybody thinks that this journey is an easy journey, you are making a mistake. In a political dialogue, we must give and take. We must accept the reality that there is a need to address the issues that divide us, to address the issues that make differences in the way we live and the way we work for the betterment of our country. So it is not an easy journey. Let's all be prepared for that journey. And therefore, on that note, before I proceed, I must congratulate the President of the Republic for accepting a political dialogue to better our polity in the country. I congratulate you, Mr. President, for that visionary idea and for taking up the bull by the horn to call on all political parties to come and sit down and discuss and chat the way forward. On that note, Mr. President, in a gathering like this, I always feel nostalgic. When I see my colleagues sitting down next to me and I fail to see the likes of Omar Jalo, Mr. Femi Peters, Lamin Diba and others, I remember in 2016, when we all used to sit together, discuss the issues of this country that led us to where we are today, I feel that they deserve prayers for all, all of us that they have parted, they have gone, they've played their role. I please would request, if permitted, that before we leave this gathering, that we pray for those people and others that have not named who have been with us and today they have gone and they sacrificed all their life and did everything they could to participate in their country. Mr. President, just to summarize, since I don't have enough time to deliberate on these issues, I think the first role that we need to do in every parliamentary democracy, looking at how we harmonize our issues, we must look at the Gambian context. Today, I believe that at the end of this program, the management of state resources should be a key pillar in the discussion of these things. How do we discuss the issue of 
the management, physical management of state resources, and how do we manage and discuss the issue of land management and land use in the Gambia? We must accept that the issue of land is becoming a threatening national security issue that needs to be discussed by everybody. So that at the end of the day, the government of the Gambia will do what its people want them to do. The issue of land cannot be put brushed aside whilst we are sitting here. The issue of religious coexistence must be an issue that we have to address. We cannot allow few people picking up microphones, insulting and abusing others because they have an opportunity to speak. We must copy what happened in other countries, where people are rising to speak, where you cannot just pick up a microphone and preach and insult others. The religious coexistence that we have enjoyed in this country, we cannot allow few people to destroy it. I remind you, when Pope John Paul came to this country, when Pope John Paul came to this country, when he looked back at the central mosque he saw when he was at the St. Augustine, he asked, what is that? They told him it was a church. He said, I have never seen a central church in such a religious country opposite a grand mosque. And that he praised the Gambia for being very religious. We cannot destroy that. We need to keep that. Just to us up, we must also have a level playing field in the polity. We must discuss the electoral process. We must make sure that everybody participates in the process and feel that you have been fairly treated and where it needs to, we need to amend laws, we have to amend laws to make sure the system is free and fair for everybody. So at the end of the day, when results are declared, we are obliged to accept the results. And that is important for us. And the other one, before I just, the educational system, we have to look at it. We must have an educational system that cater for our youth and for our young. We must address the issue of back way, not by talking, by looking at the causes of it. We need to create people with knowledge and skills that they can have hope in our society and stay in their country to deliver. Or wherever we export their skills, it will yield us benefit and not to see our people dying at sea. We must also, in our political debate, be responsible the way we talk, be responsible the way we attack, be responsible the way we send our views, you cannot use social media be abusing and insulting people and thinking that you are doing politics. You are doing no good to your country but doing harm to your country. Everybody has a view to express. Everybody has a view to express but it's in the manner that you are expressing this view. And in doing so, we must protect our women. We must make sure our women are protected during our debates. We cannot be afford to be abusing them calling them all sort of names. With whatever they do, it's something that they have done with men. We must open up the political space, not by word of mouth, by making so that our women feel comfortable not being intimidated and abused when they participate in politics. One again, just before I give you the floor, we must make sure security and stability is key in our governance system. We must make sure that we create peace in the country. When we went to Guinea Conakry, just to give you an example, as soon as we landed in the country, I told the president it seems that something is wrong in this country. Because since we left the airport, I've seen nobody rising and supporting this president. And all of a sudden, we saw there was a coup. And what happened? The foreign minister told me, he's been telling the opposition, don't encourage instability. When instability comes, you all become victim. Today, all of them are in exile. All of those who are instigating instability are in exile. Let's keep our democracy. We thank our armies. We thank the Gambian army and the African armies. They've done well to liberate Africa. They are good in changing government, but they are very bad in managing countries. You, we want them to stay away from our politics and our governance. Thank you, sir. We want them to stay our way. Parliamentarians. Parliamentarians are responsible of distributing and allocating national resources. It is not the President of the Republic alone. And you cannot also be talking about high cost of goods and put the, blame the government of the Gambia for that. We are not in control of the production prices overseas. When we order the product is not produced in the Gambia, President Barrow cannot dictate the cost of those goods. Few months ago, a ton of rice was $400 in the, in the international market. Today is $500 plus. 
The long grain rice, which was 500 today, is $700. How can President Barrow determine the price of that rice when he is not producing the rice? The solution of this country, let's go back and produce for what we eat and grow what we eat. And stop blaming the government. Stop blaming this government for price rise. That is cheap politics. Let's avoid that. Let's understand where the truth lies and we speak the truth and we work together. So that when we leave this hall, when we finish these discussions, we could come out with a document that would amend our laws, come out with a document where everybody will respect each other and we move the interest and the advancement of the Gambia forward. Thank you. Thank you. This is a dream come true for me. My name is Honorable Mama Kande, Secretary General and Party Leader of the Gambia Democratic Congress. Your Excellency, I'm very proud and happy today. Look at these people here. Our brothers, our sisters. This is the Gambia. This is the Gambia that we want to see. This is the Gambia that we want our future leaders of this country to emulate from. I believe it is made very clear that when it is an issue of national interest, everyone here will have the time to contribute his or her quota towards national development. We are here one people. There can be no hatred between us here. There can be no war between us here. Gambia needs to set an example in Africa. The size of our country does not matter here. Democracy does not belong to any nation or individual. We all can have our democracy in a way that suits our people. And today, Mr. President, I'm very proud of you and I thank you for taking this initiative and bringing Gambia together. It has been my... <laughs> I have been calling for this for years, personally. None of us here want to see this country in fire. We all want to lead this country, but to lead a better Gambia. And I believe this is just the beginning, Mr. President. I have been talking about this, and I would not want you to stop here. Let this be a continuous process, and to make sure that the whole world will learn from us. We have seen what is happening in Africa. There are a variety of issues that need to be discussed. There are a lot of challenges in this country that need to be discussed. So I believe it is just not possible to have it within three or five minutes. But this is just the beginning. Let's create more room for ourselves as a nation, bring our ideas together to move this country forward. There are a lot of challenges in this country. Lot of challenges, so we will not have time to discuss all this. But I can say that this is the beginning and the doors are open and I believe it is not gonna stop here. I even went to a level to propose to you, Mr. President, that on your Make the People's Tour is a constitutional mandate, is a requirement. Invite all political party leaders. It is not a political tour. Invite all political party leaders. Let us be there together and the whole world will see that we are one people.
In this way, we will do away with the politics of hatred, politics of tribalism, politics of religion. The moderator have said it here, that we are losing what the Gambia is known for was the peace and stability and the smiling course of West Africa. Why are we losing that? Why is it that no Gambian is safe at the moment? People are killed left, right and center. We, this is not our culture. I believe all of us together we can make a change. A change for better Gambia. We have to protect our women, our children, and our, our sovereignty as a nation. So on this note, I don't want to take your time. I hope that there will be a time created for all of us where we can bring in more ideas, put our uh, 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 hands on deck together to move this country forward. I thank you. Your Excellency, Mangla Gerem de la Santa, Bespu Melni Bespi Waron Nagawa Am. Bolen Gise Majok di Wachi Olof, Nayan Sora Leni Neka Sunganao. Besitegi Besla Fogis Tay Safara Am Chideka Nun political leader Signor Koital Bonak Nayan Nusora Lena Awin Fenreu Milan Am Nayan Nuin Yeme Pul Tok Pul Wahtan Nyaka Dego Amul Nyaka waktan mo de am. Tafu nyaka waktan amerek musiba dina am. Bon yakar na ne Afrika dafa joy be sonna fim neka. Bunyen amalanta wud yer mande de kabidu dam kanam. Nakte tay. Ngur bena nit munu ko yobu. Nyun nyo munu yobu sing riu. Lutah ya la defud loha bi mu ambe na baram rek. Wai def se def juru mi baram. Ndah te be na baram bi du mun dara mom kena. Nyar ni bu be nyar bo ka bole mo da ha be na bi. Nyata mu gena ba nyenen be juru. Bon suni reu mi na yen yu japa lan te na yen yu teka suni digai. Yo excellence. Bo hole de ka bi bu ba te. Rien ta gi bari na si dekab. Nyungi mel ni nyun haman te atwin. Suma imboka, kanyla gambi yel ledem ba nyoy wara ragal. Amna jamano bunti keri da nyon ube kube borsep. Ta yi muna tu lo hame kanay kan. Bulo lo ame, nyu wara tu ak wahtan, kuchi ne ka nge daw responsibility. Li nyo wah moy president adama baro ak nguram. Nyan nyo fal president adama baro. Kanya gambi ya lenembe hame wante tunyi. Eh, ba mo miti nyun nyepla wande. Te nyun nyepa takon suny diga yipul yobu gambi ya se kanaw. Bon nanya nyu delo suwa suny hel ti ganaw. Nanya nyu ubi suny bel nyu baya la te hel. Suny reo mi. Nan yang ko japa agnyari lo hote anyanchi. Suny alen la nyoko mom. Gan yang dia duka tu suny reo mi kan muna tuta ham kanay kan. Musi baga angi bari. Bunye kada nyo am sedo. Jamano ji tayi ku am. Renka ko chisafari duwa halat kenen. Teli yobu lulu reg mwai nan yang nyu boka nyu wahtan. Your Excellency in the world, I am your mom. Today, you are the one who is here with me. I am not here with you. For the first time, I am the one who is here with you. Why not? I am the one who is here with you, Your Excellency. I am the one who is here with you. I am the one who is here with you. I am the one who is here with you. 
tay tam gambian si ñu ñepp dañ am responsibility moy let us be our brothers and sisters keeper rewmi li fay tok tay du yoon du dega i'm actually here representing dr ismail asise who's not possible who's not um who couldn't make it because he's not our, he's not in the country at the moment but uh nevertheless i'm the chairman of the party and uh, i think i can speak on on his behalf um first and foremost i would like to praise this initiative that has been launched but we all know one of the problems we have in gambia is called implementation and i was very happy to hear from john seated next to me that uh, the whole point is to implement whatever is decided. And I'm hoping that um, that can be achieved because in every institution we have, this, we have in this country, when you look at the, the books, it's well written, well good, it's very good, but to implement it is always a problem. So that's very key in what, whatever we are deciding here. Um, we must also focus on working together. I'm very critical when it comes to the government in doing things you have and I think it's my right. When te, it's important that you don't criticize, you be measured. Because man tell you, you criticize the president. You don't have to do it because of mom, um, um, personally or whatever. It's because mom is the president. When you don't have to make sure that you criticize it, but you don't have to do it because you don't have to do it because you don't have to do it because the only reason I criticize is because I don't have to do it. So I think that if we are going to do politics, we are going to do it. Because at the end of the day, we are going to talk about the political party. We are going to do it. But if we are going to do it, we are going to do it. For example, if we are going to do it, if we are going to do it, we are going to do it. 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 Nous avons tous développé les gens. Nous avons tous les gens qui ont été faits. Nous avons tous les différences. Mais nous avons tous les gens qui ont été faits. Donc, nous avons tous les gens qui ont été faits. Nous avons tous les gens qui ont été faits. Secondly, avec l'avenir de la social media, nous avons tous les gens qui ont été faits. Dans une politique de discours, nous avons tous les gens qui ont été faits. Nous avons tous les gens qui ont été faits. Donc, nous avons tous les gens qui ont été faits. Nous avons tous les gens qui ont été faits. Nous avons you make sure that when you criticize or when you are doing it, you can take it. I want to say that you are doing it. If you are doing it, you are doing it. We are doing it like this. We represent the party. If you are doing it, you are doing it. 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 New bogus political process because so many people they can do like that. So many people are doing bogus, doing bogus political process. We pull new money, them can't see the copy. Also, many Nyan pull the constitution. We it's very very important. You don't go and bala election be new. Mr. President, talk now. I think I'm on a better forum, law forum. I'm on the promotion. Then. Uh, Gambia Bar Association President, we salute all. We didn't try to So, because we are so um, difficulties you in the political parties. Because the political parties, we talk about the problem, they are very funding. They are the political parties. But if they are not active. So, I think the constitution, we def, um, 50 plus 1, we are you know, they are improve a lot the participation in this political process. So, we are the constitution, we are going to I'm going to take the affair of corruption. Whatever initiative we need to talk about, we need to try to implement. If we don't have corruption, we can't do it in the cabin. So, we try to do it in the cabin. We try to do it in the cabin. We try to do it in the cabin. We try to implement it. So, we need to do it in the cabin. Things need to improve. Because corruption is not in the cabin. We need to do it 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 in the cabin. So, I'm going to say that you said that you And finally, I'm going to tell you that I'm going to say that in the history of Gambia, I'm going to say that because you know all the time, they have this opposition as enemy, as law that they don't have. They have a place where they don't have to be against the people. Because they don't have to be against the people. 
why the belief that diversion views are important in the And I urge us to continue this. Um, can we have any can we have more time? We have more in your more than your fitah fi, and we can continue. And many great presidents, so long come with this initiative, and we can continue. Jawa salam. Thank you so much, Mr. Diab. We will now call on Honorable Bakari. This occasion is staged to give them the floor, give their perspectives. I salute all of you. As they say, all protocols duly observed. Your Excellency President Barrow, when your letter of kind letter of invitation reached us at the Gambia at Gambia for all, we felt honored. We therefore like to thank you. We are also quite pleased to find ourselves here today to attend or even participate in this meeting. We do hope and look forward to learning from it, if not to contribute, but to at least learn. For this, we thank you very much. We've noted also the way the this dialogue process is uh, conceived of in terms of how it is structured across um, plant, um, what do you call them, uh, fora, sectoral fora, technical fora, to culminate in a, an open forum here, I think on the, on the 16th. And we took note of the interesting subjects which have been selected for deliberation as themes. We really don't have much to say or to quarrel about that. We find the different themes quite pertinent and we are quite hopeful that um, if, if, if justice is done to them, the outcome will be to the good of the country and uh, for that we commend you. I wouldn't even want to go into details of it, simply to observe that because of the urgency attached to it, we are particularly delighted that the management of public resources is listed as one of the topics that will be considered. Uh, not to say the other uh, topics are not important. In fact, as I said, there are, the list is not necessarily exhaustive. But there is a particular urgency in our opinion, in Gambia for all, uh, to reflect on the management of resources, not only as a democratic requirement, because equitable and effective management of resources goes to the heart of good governance, which is the heart of a democratic system. But secondly, ours is a situation of dire resource constraints amidst increasing needs of our people. So therefore, how we manage those resources uh, is a very critical issue. And unfortunately, unfortunately, it's not just our observation at Gambia for All, but if you follow um, debates, if you also observe the mood in the country, there is a lot of concern and disquiet about a number of things going on that affect the management of resources, that even in some cases are tantamount to mismanagement of resources. I can cite, for instance, the issue of corruption, which has been talked about for a long, long time. And when we reflect now, over the seven years since the change from a system which must not be uh, forgiven for its <coughs> record of mismanagement, but at least is understandable, 
in the sense that it was a, a dispensation. It was by its na very nature, inefficient and corrupt. That's a dictatorship. Since 2016 change, the expectations have been that there will be a decisive and effective uh, move away from, uh, from, from the scourge of corruption. And yet, what we are seeing in terms of uh, uh, what has been revealed by um, inquiries that have been carried out, as well as regular periodic audits, is that if anything, uh, corruption is continues to fester, and therefore uh, a major threat to effective and good management of our resources. Allied to it also is the question of commitment to ensuring accountability. Here we have to uh, go again to the implementation of, of uh, recommendations that arise from audits and other probes. Again, we are seeing some concern with some concern, developments which really don't seem to satisfy us. That is uh, the fact, for instance, that when we uh, look at the long period of stewardship under the dictatorship, the only or the major um, attempt to ensure accountability for wrongdoings during the time, apart from, of course, the human rights abuses which the TRRC process seems to be wanting to address, has been just the Janet Commission, whose scope, in my opinion, is rather limited in that it, it focused on <laughs> the person of Mr. Jame and his close associates, I think the term was close associates. But it's difficult to make us believe that the mismanagement that has gone on, that had gone on during those long 23 years was limited to only what Jame and his people did and his close associates did. I think a much thorough uh, uh, probe into what has happened going on would have been given a better signal to our commitment to ensure accountability. That apart, even the little outcome that we got from those inquiries in terms of their implementation and subsequent actions, which we seem to see as a reversal of what had been established against them, or in a way helping to cover up for impunity. <coughs> These are worrying concerns. Closely associated again, with the uh, management or mismanagement of resources is the issue of waste in the government system. The state is proving extremely <coughs> difficult and onerous for an economy like ours. I think this has to be looked at. It has to be looked at very seriously. The, uh, the, 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 the way this government resources are budgeted don't give the, the governed, those who are not in the government, a fair chance to bargain. We have to take what has been decided for us by the, by the governors, the executive and the legislature. But if we had given a chance, I think we would have said, no, you are charging us too much for this. You people are charging, the, the, we the government, too much for what you provide. I think that needs to be looked, there's another area which needs to be looked at carefully if we're going to improve on the uh, resource management. Uh, take, for instance, the, the civil service for the public services, obviously it's over, over bloated, it's top heavy and unnecessary. Some of us have had experiences, at least of uh, what the tasks fall to some of the outfits we, we see. Take for instance our diplomatic missions. I now see the norm is for missions to be over bloated with ambassadors, deputy ambassadors and so many, which are really not necessary at all. And these are very expensive, uh, they make <coughs> very expensive indents in the use of public resources. So waste is also another aspect which I think should be uh, included in the consideration of uh, the management of resources. Uh, and I, maybe I can cite a few more, but I maybe I'll stop there. Just to give you an example, uh, reasoning, my reasoning behind, say, behind saying that there is special urgency that should be attached to the consideration of the area of resource management. 
to look out for possible improvements in that direction. That point having been made, the only other reflection I'd like to make is provoked by thought that went through my mind as I listened. As I said, I did note the, the way this particular dialogue is structured, and I have no much, much quarrel with that. I also note that the topics listed for discussion are, are very pertinent. But I wondered really what really is going to be the, um, <coughs> the what go, what's going to be the, the, the feature, as it, as it were. The moderator himself talked about guiding against turning this into a talk shop. And I also wonder whether if it's not a talk shop, and the president did say he wants it to be institutionalized, which means that it's not going to be one-off, but it may not be uh, one-off, it may be institutionalized, but what will be the substance? What will be the substance? Is it going to be another uh, talk shop, as the, as the moderator said, or some occasion for back slapping and uh, <coughs> scratch my back and I scratch your back kind of session? Or is it going to be meaningful uh, input into the improvement of the governance of the country. I think really that uh, we have to give a lot of attention to that. Um, for instance, for one thing it's important that we assign to this process uh, matters that, 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 don't, that don't necessarily bring about stepping on each other's throat, uh, feet, on each other's shoes. There is a a government in place which has got the mandate to, ro to, to run and has, of course, got to decide on direction of policy. But I think we can agree on issues that touch on basic values that we subscribe to as a nation. Values such as democratic life uh, or democratic system of government, values such as uh, oneness of our nation, values such as uh, equitable distribution of resources that we've just been talking about. And whenever those, what those issues appear to be threatened by happenings or absence of happenings, then I think it's necessary to uh, think of an appropriate forum for consulting uh, and getting alternative views if possible with a view to getting, building consensus. It's important that we go for a style of government which makes consensus building an essential feature, if not a cornerstone, of our, our, our governance system. This is really my, 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 my uh, reflection that I want to uh, co uh, contribute to the idea. Not so much about the, the, the present uh, session that we are convening, but the feature of this as a style or as a feature of, uh, of, uh, of, of governance in the country. I think dialogue is important. It ensures inclusivity. It also goes to, as I say, help in building consensus, which is necessary in a small country like ours. I think with those few remarks, I want to <coughs> take leave and uh, thank you once again for uh, Mr. <coughs> President for taking the initiative. President of the Republic of the Gambia, President Anamabaro, for according us this opportunity once again to have a consultative forum of political party leaders, to ensuring that we have a consolid consolidating um, approaches. Uh, one of the issues that the Gambia Action Party want to look at, especially in the governance architecture, will cover the laws of this country the National Assembly and its oversight functions of the executive. I'm speaking on behalf of my party leader, Honorable Musa Hussein Riyali Bachili, who is presently out of country. And then, as the deputy party leader, I'm here to ensure the message of the Gambia Action Party also filtered. We have problems with the laws. And we have to make these laws right, especially the National Assembly, its oversight functions they have with the executive. Um, where we will have laws passed 
and National Assembly members will sit in the National Assembly without wearing political hats. Um, this will ensure that um, the national interests will cover some of these laws that we're talking about. And the other thing is the hate speech. And the hate speech will also look at the role of the Independent Electoral Commission to ensuring that um, political parties are well regulated in a manner whereas the issue of hate speech will be set aside. Because if we want to build a peace infrastructure, these are some of the areas we want to look at to ensuring that um, political parties come forward to, up to, 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 to exclude themselves from making hate speeches. The other point I looked at is the general reforms. And these reforms are key. One of them is the SSR. The SSR is very important that the Gambia government takes the lead and ensures that these reforms are made. And the other point I want to look at is the implementation of the TRC recommendations. Yes, of course. Um, I could remember where a convergence was held. Political party leaders, our executive, are also invited to ensure the recommendations are launched through the collaboration with the Minister of Justice and the victims that we are also affected and will ensure that um, the process should be done and dusted. The other thing I want to look at is our foreign policy. Uh, we need to have a very vibrant foreign policy, whereas the ambassadors we have outside there, government is expending lots of resources on some of these embassies. And if at all we want to talk about resource mobilization or resource management, will ensure that um, we cut some of these expenditures to suit our local context. I want to look at the building a peace infrastructure. In building a peace infrastructure, it's not an easy job. And I will want to recommend here that the president will focus on strengthening the capacity of the Interparty Committee because the Interparty Committee is one of these structures, is one of these pillars that will promote a peace infrastructure. And I could remember, if at all, we envisage some of the mandate of the Interparty Committee, we will ensure that um, we have contemporary arrangements like this, whereas if not, on, if not quarterly, but a national dialogue where it will include political parties will come every six months so that we can talk about things of national concerns. And the capacity of the IPC, which is also key, will come and play a greater role in building the peace infrastructure that we, we want. I could remember the Gambia holds third before in the African Peace Countries Index. And now we are losing it to position five, where Ghana, Namibia, and other countries are now taking over. And these are indicators that have shown clearly that the Gambia is losing this. And for us to go back to that position or even go before that position, I think we have a lot to do in ensuring that we build a peace infrastructure in this country. Um, the other thing I want to look, look at is the maritime education. Maritime education is key because uh, as we see, it's part of agriculture. And then secondly, youth in this country are also um, depending on fish catching and other things that has to do with marine. So if at all we have a maritime education fit for purpose, where there could be policies or a map layout for youth to benefit from such a kind of um, capacity to ensure that um, education that, uh, to, to ensure that um, maritime can be utilized to its potential. Another thing is smart agriculture. The manner in which we've seen agriculture being practiced in this country has been here for a long time. And I think we have to shift from where we used to and then involve ourselves into smart agriculture. Um, this will entail government can come in to play a role to create state farms. And these state farms will be there to ensure that we grow what we eat and eat what we grow. In subsistence farming, 
is a big challenge where our families will only farm for something that we eat at home, but we can never use or utilize it to export or do other things that will bring on income. So for us to move to that pedestal, we actually need to ensure that we, we, we involve ourselves into um, smart agriculture and then eat what we grow and grow what we eat. And the last one on the list is the utilization of AI, in, um, artificial intelligence. Um, these are countries in the world that have been maximizing the potential of AI in different sectors of development, um, be it agriculture, be it health in particular, where artificial intelligence has been used. And we've seen those countries how they've been doing it. And they've moved far way better than where they are today. And last but not the least is to, I'm pleading on the government of the Gambia to ensure that um, the state resources should be equitably distributed to Gambians so that nobody will see himself or herself out of the box, but make sure everybody benefits from what we earn as, 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 as a state. And if this happens, I think we can consolidate a lot, not only the governance architecture, not only democracy, but we can consolidate the overall um, socioeconomic development. I want to thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you, Mr. Bayo. We now invite Mr. Ab Ab I want to thank Your Excellency to commend you for your courage in engaging oppositions in this dialogue today. It's not a mean feat. For me, it's a big achievement. So I want to thank you very much for giving us the opportunity. I want to vary a little in terms of my approach. I would like to uh, offer two brief comments. One is perception. When I say perception, I am referring to the party in government. How do you see the opposition? If you see the opposition as enemies, then the relationship will not start well. But if you see the opposition as opponents, then you're working towards building your own legacy. Because the only outfit that is allowed to criticize is the opposition. By nature, by design, they will harp on things that are not right or not so right. And you, as the sitting government, your desire is to serve your people. And the, your work agenda should be set by what's not right. So therefore, it's very important that you have a very healthy relationship you know, with the opposition. Two is adherence of, adherence of the rule of law. When we adhere to the laws that we create, because laws are created you know, to create a just society, if we don't apply them selectively, but we apply them uniformly, then there will be peace and there will be stability. Mr. President, I want you to understand that if you're elected president, you cease to be partisan. You don't belong to any party, you belong to the country. I remember when Lee Kuan Yew of Singapore was first elected as prime minister, what he did was he invited his close associates and uh, members of his family. What he said to them was, if any one of you is looking for special favors in this government, you're making a mistake. From now on, I belong to Singapore. So Mr. President, when you have been elected as president, you belong to the Gambia. And everything that you do should be done in the interest of the Gambia and the citizens of this country. So everybody in this country belongs to you and you belong to everybody. 
Thank you very much. Fellow Gambians, on the 18th February 1965, Gambians in their thousands turned out to the Makati Square to witness the proceedings of a historic occasion. Predominant in the hearts of most Gambians were the emotions of happiness and amazement. Some were happy because the Gambians have now assumed the mantle of leadership, while others were amazed at the subjugation of a mighty power to the persistent demands of a small and tiny African country for nationhood. Your Excellencies, at the time, the Gambia was deemed an improbable nation. We defied, the Gambia defied, all of the negative predictions that were made about the sustainability and the viability of our nation. With very limited resources and human resources, material and human resources, we were able to lift the Gambia out of difficult circumstances. And over a period of time, the Gambia became the peace headquarters of Africa, the improbable nation creating significant impact. And not only that, after having found our feet out of the initial difficulties of building a new nation, with some challenges in terms of the economy, the Gambia established a successful economy. And our experience in the construction of that economy became a lesson for other countries in the Sahel. Our democracy became some of the most attractive export of the Gambia. It was not a perfect system but it was one of the best in the continent. And then came 1994, when the Gambia embarked, or alighted into a vehicle, and then engaged a permanent reverse gear. That may be a matter of controversy. But then we had to fight our second war of independence in 2016, in order to launch what we call the New Gambia. So indeed, we do not have any major political crisis in this country today. There is no civil war, and there is no, no crisis really that would change the character of our governance system in any shape or form. The Gambia remains a peaceful democracy. So why the need for a dialogue? It is very important. Because as a nation democracy, democracy is the greatest ex political experiment in the history of mankind. We must continue to improve our democracy. So the dialogue seeks to consolidate our emerging democracy. And in that sense, Your Excellency, we feel very honored and privileged to be participating in this process. We are talking about preserving the nation, safeguarding the state, and securing resources. You cannot preserve the nation if you do not safeguard the nation. You cannot safeguard the nation if you do not seek to preserve the nation. And all of this requires effective management of our resources, effective public finance management of our resources. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Gambia has had one major problem throughout its history. The crisis of leadership the crisis of leadership. The manner in which we conduct our politics 
has been responsible for overheating of the polity. The Gambia Moral Congress has at its core foundation the imperative to restore morality, the morality as a content of politics. When you practice politics with morality, then the issue of preserving the state will be the core of our governance system. When we practice without morality, then accountability and responsibilities fly through the window. What we need is a soul searching as a nation. Responsibility becomes collective when each of us assumes what each of us ought to perform. Collective responsibility in preserving the nation requires strengthening our institutions. It requires effective service delivery at public and civil service. It requires effective enforcement of the rule of law, a strong, vibrant, independent judiciary. It requires a strong, vibrant private sector. None of these are possible if we do not have consensus citizens, if we do not take ownership of our country. It is the lack of ownership which is reflected through the lack of practice, through the lack of politics of morality that is responsible for a lot of the inefficiencies we, we experience everywhere else. And that is why the lack of ownership of our nation, that is why it becomes easy for those of us, for those in the civil service to go to office late. I've worked with the president. His Excellency is always present at his desk before eight o'clock and would not go home before five o'clock every single day. Unfortunately, this cannot be said of the civil service. And we must speak through each other. When we talk about incompetence, you are not talking about the president is not performing because the president alone cannot do everything. The civil services, hundreds, hundreds, a few thousands, constituted by Gambians, we go to office late. Our daily tasks are not effectively executed. You have a file that you need to work on. You have a file that should take a day, will end up taking a whole week. It is not the responsibility of the president that you refuse to execute your responsibility to work on a file that should take you an hour will take a whole day. It is not the responsibility of the president alone that you go to office late and you are paid on time. And all these things are common phenomena in the civil service. It is not the responsibility of the president alone. When you need to perform an obligation, you demand incentive for that obligation to be performed. All these are matters of public nature that we must talk about. It is not the responsibility of the president that we scheme travels in order to earn padiams. It is not the responsibility of the president. I understand. Uh, you've given me, you've given, I, I've calculated our times. So I'm, I'm coming down now. I'll soon, I'll, I'll soon conclu conclude. It is, not, it is not the responsibility of the president that when there are tenders, those of us in the private sector would undermine the process by trying to corrupt members of the, of the tender committee. So in terms of corruption, in terms of public um, finance management, in terms of public accountability, it is the whole nation that is culpable. When we talk about corruption, corruption demands a giver and a receiver. If you do not give, there will be no receiver. And we have laws. When we talk about security, everybody must be an ambassador of security. If you give to the traffic officer on the beat, on the road, because you do not have a driver's license, or you do not have insurance, you are encouraging crime. And it is we, the citizens, who are guilty of this performance. So let us look at ourselves. Let us reflect as a nation. Thank you. Let us put the blame where the blame is. As members of a partner party, 
like you said, and I agree with that. I, I will no longer use opposition. As part, members of partner parties, let us criticize constructively. And also, I urge the government on the other side to be more responsive. And this dialogue, Your Excellency, you have indicated your willingness to receive new ideas, to open up. But then we must always understand that the type of following we attract reflects the type of leader we have in political parties. If the leadership is conscientious and morally obligated, the, the followers will follow. So we must look at ourselves critically and observe that changes need to be effected internally within political parties. Because political parties are government in waiting. If we intend to govern, we must reform the way we conduct our politics before we assume the mantle of leadership. The medium is small, but Your Excellency, uh, I want to encourage this type of dialogue to continue. At the Gambia Moral Congress, we believe politics without morality will lead this country down the drain. Politics with morality will do away with dishonesty, will do away with corruption and stealing, will do away with cheating, and will do away with all the other vices that besets this country. Honest politics is easy to perform than dishonest politics. It is easy to praise than insult. It is easy to embrace than disunite. Your Excellency, we are willing to work with you to put this country on a straight path, and we open our doors for partnership for all other political parties to move this country to the next trajectory. Thank you very much. My name is uh, Mr. Ba Esjavi. I am here representing Gambia Alliance for National Unity uh, with my fellow executive members, Mr. Pa Sane and Madam Korkajalo. As a party, we have always pledged our support to the National Development Plan that is being championed by the borough administration, and we feel honored to be accepted to be part of this very, very serious and important um, dialogue. For this, we are very grateful, Your Excellency, and we would like to continue to give our unalloyed support to you as the head of this country and uh, to support you in your effort to move the Gambia to socio-economic heights. Now, turning to the theme of the gathering today, which is our collective responsibility of preserving the nation, safeguarding the state, and securing our resources, this theme, Your Excellency, resonates very well with the Gano Party's core mandate which is to rally everyone towards the attainment of national unity in the pursuit of the common development goals of the Gambia. We know this aim is not just a mere desire, but practically achievable goals when we come together as one force to preserve and safeguard the state and secure our resources for now and for posterity. It is worth noting, Your Excellency, that to achieve these goals, we have to create a state of peace and stability. And the pursuit for peace and stability for rapid progress to occur, we must identify conflict drivers so that appropriate strategies can be put in motion to tackle them. This is the more reason why Ghanu Party has embarked on massive sensitization of its support bases to distance themselves at all times from insults, dangerous and hate speeches, for we have identified these as some of the biggest conflict drivers in any given democracy. We have also identified social exclusion as a conflict driver and for that reason, 
we have always given a lot of attention to the inclusion of women, youth, and the disabled in our different political party structures and programs. These women, the youth, and the disabled always form part of our decision-making processes. Mr. President, while we acknowledge that wisdom is mostly associated with the elderly, we take into account the demographic dividend of the youth, and therefore we, we continuously design roles for them that will make them feel that they belong, that, they make, that will make them feel that they belong to this country, and we also encourage them to stay in this country and work towards their self and individual actualizations. We also think that by in including the youth, women, and the disabled in our structures, we'll prepare them to love and protect this country and then fight against all forces of destabilization. The Ganu Party is conscious of the fact that the struggle among various political parties and their supporters over the votes of the government electorates have continued to generate fear and apprehensions among stakeholders, including the electorates. We are cognizant of the need to take proactive measures to prevent and or mitigate hate speech, fake news, insults, and violence before, during, and after every election. And we want to state here that we will reaffirm our commitment and we will like to call on others to do the same commitment to the Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia and to accord the honor that is due to the President as the head of state of the Republic of the Gambia and also to see all opposition parties as partners in national development and to respect all the laws of the Republic of the Gambia and not to promote diversionary rhetoric so that we can be united in purpose for social cohesion in our march to national development. Finally, Mr. President, we know for our nation to prosper, we must not allow our personal interests to override the common interests so that collectively we can preserve our nation and safeguard the state and our livelihoods by securing our resources in peace and harmony. I thank you all for your kind attention. <laughs> Les plus d'hommes à la manière de vous dire que vous avez des gens qui vous ont fait. Il y a des événements, des consultations, des dialogues. Il y a des gens qui ont fait la constitution. Il y a des gens qui ont fait la constitution. Il y a des gens qui ont fait la constitution. Il y a des gens qui ont fait la constitution. Il y a des gens qui ont fait la constitution. Il y a des gens qui ont fait la Kon lepullo hamn definen kujeb bale dina am reflect dina reflect cibi. Lepullo hamn nacih muitel cibi am nacih dina johe dayo kili khawati benen jeta iwaktar. Ta waktar warta M cibi ben. Rio dah ingkau iwaktar ni. Political party ibinyo ibinya kaya. Amu ken ko am interest, walau ikin jiti rio, bu am interest pur gambia neka chi chono, neka chi kulo akiru agayo. Kepu ko ham na yang kite gambia neka chi jamu, muise ini. Kon kine ke chingur, am na chair chilul. Ah, tembing ote ni te, ah lu am solol. We preserving the nation, safeguarding the state, and securing our resources. Real language, 
bu dege rew nit ñi ak li fa nek motax su fa dara nekatu nekatu rew kon nit ñu ñu ak li nek ci rew mo muy resources yi ak lepp lu fa mëta nek nuñ koy tiyé amna solo kon lolu ciri ñepp la kon legi lan moy li nga xamne moy jëmal lolu wala moy deugeral lolu moy ni waxtan ci deug ak jup ak firanga political party yi ci fi nek yeb ci jamma lañu taxaw lool lañ bëgg ku ci bëgg lenen bo jëlé rew mi cioro la lay jural fekk fi jamma jamma kenu ci am lu doy ku fi tok lo liggey 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 jamma bi du jeex du du doy sa yu keneen ñewé amna lum def kon ki fi nek na def jamma liggey jamma ki ñew xamna jamma la fi fekk suma ñewé continuer ci jamma rew mi li nga xamne moy resources ci rew mi li ci gëna am solo moy nit ñi yeen fu sa ngeen nit lañ am ci rew mi lu am solo la kon den jang amna solo lan la juy jang nay identify ñu set rew mi ci yeen jëm yeen kenn moko taxawal yeen kenn moy la am doole pour dem ci kanam ñi jang fexé jang mi ñi indale ko ci walu gogu ñu defar nit ñi ci kaw li rew mi soxla ñi jang li rew mi soxla way nekku jang pour am xam xam kefe xam xam muy defar li rew mu nek amna ci xam xam yo xamne moko uppal jeriñ kon nañ fexé jang ci jup dom adama jup mo am solo pour bon waye li koy djumal lim xam daf ci am solo li nga xam ñaara moy vitamine li ngay djubé wala li ngay dengé ni place ci rew mi nit ñi ko amé ben nga djubal ben nga ñaaka djubal djuwal gi amna luko waral kon ben ci djuwal li koy waral kom kom bi ci la bok moy li ngay feye ko li ngay feye ko moy ñu wara son bi amna solo li ci dess moy ñaaka djubut ñaaka djub ñaaka djub kon dafa melni kon luwa bu teggu ci yoon mokoy djubanti kon ne am luwa yu teggu ci yoon ñu emale ku def lu def lu war ñi teg la ci yoon and nga man and lo man lepp lo xamne nit def nako warna am lu ko ci fek so defé lu baax war nga am lu baax so defé lu bon war nga am leneen lu lu baax kon waxtaan bi amna solo waye li koy jëmmal moy suñ fi joge ko lepp lo xamne tek dañ ko lan lañ ci implement ta ñi di rew mi ordena pour ñu waxtaan waxtaan boobu ñen ñoko wara jité lu am solo la ñi nga xamne ñoy nek ci digënté président wala rew mi ak nit ñi lu am solo lool day jëbal waxtaan timing bi ñaata waxtu wala time biñ allocate political party wala stakeholders yi ñu am time di bor sen time xelat ci li xel ci indi ci liñ xam tek ko ci tabul bi amna solo kon timing bi dafa important kon nañ fexé kenn ku nek ñu joxante ci xamne rew mi ñoko bok ñun ñepp dem karam rew mi moñu taxa jox rew wax na fi ne doomu rew jang xam xam moko yobbu ci kanam waye ak wet gu yaram waye nay set legi suñu jang mi ak suñu walu wet gu yaram gi 
Nous avons Nous rest on collective responsibility. And without the exercise of that collective responsibility, the security of national resources would not be ensured and development would be the casualty. The presumption has become a truism because of the presence of all these very important personalities here. But that collective responsibility must be contextualized. It is the role of a government to serve the people. It is the role of the opposition to aim to serve the people. And that opposition may be different from the government in form or content. So there is nothing wrong in having an opposition. They have different roles. But essentially the discourse here is not to transform a dialogue into a partisan mechanism for discourse with the people. So if this discourse is to be properly situated, we must all put partisan hearts aside and look at the nation and deal with issues in such a way that the sitting government or any other government will deem those issues to be pertinent to the development of our country and the stability of the state. In that regard, we must bear in mind that stability of nations, stability of the state, use of resources, must rest on four pillars. The first pillar is culture not our general culture, but the national culture. We have to develop, we have to have an educational system. There must be institutions of socialization. We must train the people who are to serve as service deliverers, the nurses, the teachers, the technicians of all sectors of society. And if we look at our civil service, these are the people who will constitute that service sector. We must train them. We must nurture them. We must nurture sovereign citizens so that we become one, independent of our sex, independent of our religion, independent of our ethno-linguistic groups. We must become Gambians. But to do that, we must train them. That is why the educational system must be interrogated. Are we really training sovereign Gambians? Are we really nurturing sovereign Gambians who love country and people? That is the trajectory. And those people are the people who would be the builders of the nation that we hope to develop. Number two, it is essential to have that social pillar. Honorable members here, Your Excellency the President, we all know that the issue of life expectancy is important. Look at the number of people who are passing away. How do we increase the longevity of their lives? We look at child mortality, maternal mortality, and it is important to improve the quality of our data because many people in our society have this privacy and respect for the dead that many will bury without informing the state. So how can we ensure that everybody who passes away would be recorded 
so that we have really improved data and know the causes of death so that we know how to really prevent many of the deaths. That is important. The issue of poverty. If we say half the population are living in abject, how do we address those issues? That is important. But we must have the data and then look for ways and means of addressing the issues of poverty. The next element is the economy. That economic foundation, all of us must bear in mind that there are imbalances between import and exports, imbalances between revenue and expenditure. We must take note of this. What is responsible for that? We look at remittances, they are in fact more than even our earnings from imports. So we must look at all this, and we must look at all these correlations in order to find out why are we not able to build an economy which will move away merely from taxation in rendering services to be able to build a productive base to be able to address all the concerns. These are issues, national issues which we should address. Not only that it is important for us to bear in mind that the social issues are very significant, but we must move to the political issue, my last consideration, because that is the state that we have to conserve. And we all know that overstay in office, unconstitutional takeover of office, have also been a disease in our sub-region and causing a menace. So we should sit down and look at these two issues. Unconstitutional overstay in office, unconstitutional assumption of office. How do we save the Gambia from such a reality? How can we debate on our constitution, which we should now put to the fore, because it helps us to build a polity that we own? And we can all discuss this in order to shape a future that we own. So my take here is that this is the beginning of a very important exercise. The beginning of a conversation among a people to determine the destiny of a country that we own. Inclusiveness is necessary at this stage. And inviting all of us here he started that process of a national conversation to determine whether you are in office or outside of office, what is your role in helping to build a stable state, a stable country, the harnessing of resources in order for all of us to benefit. I don't know how much time I have, but I would like to put this across, that we are talking about management of resources. But the real issue is generation of resources and allocation of resources. In my home, every morning, women will come from all over the Congos and descend on my street. And they are selling without wilderness, without water, under the hot sun. Every single day, I cannot even get out of my camper. So, what is the relation between central and local government? Is the structure that we have in resource allocation really the appropriate one? How do we ensure a balanced and proportional allocation of the resources of the land? Don't we need to change our budgeting system so that whatever is at the local level will be budgeted for? at the national level and we allocate resources on that basis? Could we continue to maintain this type of local government structure? Is it sustainable? These are issues we need to look at. Thank you. It gives us, at the NCP, great pleasure and honor to be here today. At this occasion of the National Congress on the subject, our collective responsibility in preserving the nation, safeguarding the state, and securing our resources.
Your Excellency, the President, we are very much pleased and honored to participate in this dialogue of political parties initiated by you. And we say thank you very much, Mr. President, for calling such a gathering. In the same venue, I would like to thank all political parties participating in this important national call. We must commend the efforts for organizing this dialogue that we believe will be about mutual understanding and trust among us as stakeholders in the national development process. Mr. Chairman, as stakeholders, we all have the objective of moving this country from a least developed country to a level that would be envied and that will be envied by everyone. Therefore, our objectives are the same. What may differ may be our approaches. I therefore, oh sorry, therefore, the theme of this dialogue it's our collective responsibility to ensure that we are, we, we, we are all not our new democracy. To grow and acknowledge and to, to recognize sorry, to be recognized By our, by, our value, by our value partners around the globe. Maintaining democracy, rule of law, and respect for international law is our greatest strength. Every Gambian has the responsibility in fulfilling this obligation. We have understand that there, is, there can never be any meaningful development without peace, security, stability, and sustainability. We have jealously guard the peace and stability we are known for. I therefore urge every Gambian to give priority to national development by providing support and guidance to the government for long-term development of our motherland. I understand the government has just launched the National Development Plan year one. A few days ago, that map the way that not the way greater socio-economic development and good governance, democracy leading to peace and security of the Gambia. Mr. Chair, it's once again our collective responsibility to ensure 
that all relevant stakeholders take part in the effective implementation of the NDP. Let us stand together for national development and better nation of our national resources. I would put in a few points that we have to look into. That is the youth and the women. If you come to any country, or let me just say the Gambia, we have 68.9% of our population who are all youths. And if you single it out, 57% of the Gambian population are women. They need your kind assistance, Mr. President, as you have always been there for them. And we always thank you for that. We at the NCP, as Alien Partners, also promise that we will work hand in glove with you in whatever national development plan you put. All your agendas will be high on our tables. And I thank you all. Thank you very much. Kafale, I'm content to be here. I'm going to be here with you. Bari anyanta kila nunjuu na le, bari kama mfurek, atarere ni nyonya mbaya baki kare kabiri atale, because small idamal tema, for political party lema, for small mi alonko disiri, kaka cha idamal tema puru ila yirua, ani la nyato ta, ani banko la nyato ta, wamu kule tumi alonko akuma ya tabaki le, mose mi kero na kule mpuru ka ani nyande, follow follow na kwa entelbe mi mfola. Walem kontem kota People's Alliance Party, PAP, meta nying advocate lale for a very long time. Kafu ko Gambian tool ni mu bangkul ti mialung ko bangkun dinem. Ntol na jang mu mu let mi angku mu believe us let walem ko mu jamal bejel lata ala lambe dinol foloka. Nka dinol min folo ba ke walem Muslim and Christianity. Barin si diam ba ke Muslim o dinol akarola an ngalung ko Christianity fana is almost the same. Nkamin kumbojang, kum division mall tema, amanke an issue ti gambe jang. At level to me alon ko communal level. Ndol na dino e mimfo, andu wole mtonyata. Momo lata alala ya understand ki balo na kolem ko ala ko alkurano tabe wole teda. Alala kumwa kwa wole ko. Ko ayen dida ale kambondi musol bala ni nkiel. Anata ayen ta, ayen ke CLT, animba nkolo. Wamu ala la wilati. Nte feo fene nola je. Atele ndeda ayem bundi musol ni kiel bala. Ayem ki bankol ti, ayem ki siel ti. O bankol na gole mko, ay dol ke Gambia nol ti. Ay dol ke Senegal el ti. Ay dol ke Amerika nol ti. Ay dol ke Chinese nol ti. Ay dol ke Tuba bol ti. Ay dol ke Mofi nol ti. So ntol nak ayem den nying Gambia ndi ngol la. Gambia la population ko less than 3 million. Gambia nol puru mol be nyantem ying understan la ay koyin na. Adiata nye, akuyata nye, Gambia jang, siel mimbe jang, ibebe tarla jane forever. As long as mwole bupalo. Wo mwole ma mfendo wato. Wo alale la nye nita wala. Ntolbe mu kilimonti. Ayende nye nye. Woto ngalonko nte fengke no leje. Nye Gambia la history jibe bring oral history starter. Waran recorded history bring a starter. Eka mimfo wole mko nye siel bebe jane. Eko exista peacefully. What on told them my limbang co exist no sign peacefully. Many no more blame than yantam for only blame. Honey, Namera Alka Kansala Kelo Moilano. Birum Futa Koebeka, if you come on call to win the fourth second. Yemunakan, we are for Kelo. Bernim Molia Moy Futa, Molka Merako Futa, coming full of Lebeji. Oniko Kabu, a camera coming Kabun called Lebeji. Neither Futa what time was sealed Belebeji. A monkey full of drunted. Siel bel be jahas ringke. Nita ta nina ta kabu fana kansala. Nina ta kabu ibata loko siel fana bel be jee. So sain barbiru wo kelo kere aja ko kelo nying. Ilaf ta min na fang kadino du mi jee bar kelo ta sambala no. Ilaf ta min kelo wo le compromise a dialogue. Oto dialogue kumata. Barim tola mol min ni follow na ta aja ko wisdom sato. 
beren tol lañu ñëmaan la bama joko wisdom be talakan cause wisdom ñi mumenti wolam ko yé sana wu ya sambanan ya sambanan ka bon kol ni mu lol tem na mool ya develop ya sambanan ñomi ni jaara tema ya sambanan ñomi ni fo ñu kol tema so definitely obviously ñu tol ñanta mek solal nga wu prisam anum pour woy prisam attaquer la commune de diamo dron ñu ka min fo wolam ko na banko ane na banko la soto fengo pour ka prisam mool ñanta jelal koy stake interest soto wotole ni me la interest bi ni me fa mo djeje nata ona sit ni mantra djé ni kamim fa wek la diam kensa wala ron mati bari atitano dla banko kan na fo banko dimo li yaaje koy tol ila mansa kunda be tol le represent kan pour la interest fo yaaje koy economy ni i tol le fana yé stake soto djéle they are the main stakeholders fo yaaje koy security ni fana i tol le marta i fa mo la security la ni ma responsible na economy la ma responsible na na economy la nga djé ko na banko ajo ko administration ni kaajo ka mar represent baake abe ko yalla baake pour nga ñaata ta soto bari mool ka min be fo jang si diamu le bi fo soma mool be gambe la problème lo ne corruption be siarim baake le wo ñaata adresse la ñame mool be ya lo ne very simple on employment be siarim baake le a ñaata adresse la ñame fo nga si honestly nga feentol fo la nga djoko nga na banko kanu le ba close da be nga la ka ko time fe kele because politics no la diamu ka siale ñanta min fo la is too much bari ni gambia ta bi yentol bondi gambia yen samba switzerland Yes yes we sol bondi Swiss ala ni samba na Gambia within 5 years Gambia no be bola Gambia je ne kata Swiss fosu lol mi ye wotti na because of attitude lam fo ngam fango kanu nga na banko kanu nga la ñola nga la na banko mol la nga bala fa soro na banko banko dungol ye resources fa nan a ñanta allocate la ñame a ñanta ke la le for the benefit for the benefit of Gambians because ni aji be mo be seno la santo aka min soto min ni ka soto ke baake fo sango ko in 6 months is have come maybe 100,000 or 100,000 plus let's say 6 months kono 20,000 dollars is a month ila balu ko tra colare moy tra do ko la man sa ko nda ko no aka 20,000 so a month jenni ba fala 2 3 years ay 3 or 5 million dollars is kora so i mean fo nga tilling mi yen da hande rek nga way ka foko time bantale bari is very simple nga lon ke ba do be ya ka fo ne na yen sinda ka fo ne ko moy la balu to mune da hande ning ko be di am la ko ne man jam fa tilling o drong ni la fa nga ñaato ta soro definitely atake la diamo dronti ñi ma ñana ke la diamo dronti pour ka fo rek ndam mal ka ñoo nga ñaa ka continuer diamo la endlessly africa ñi ngi isan african issue amanke gambia dam maati de ñu tolle ñanta reflect la nga jokon be koku kela a ñanta kelal pour gambia ani gambia non la min ke tan ka ñim fengol min be ñi ni mo dool be jeenu ngay soto ke baake ala soto siata amina ay korda jamal soto ay moto jamal soto biring abe fala akadi may ko e be fala bar nim fatal lafta ku kilin ro yewo kenya wala ko ni ben sambale be tam badela lafta e kawaso ta yewo dum ci moto ako oke be oke la ka biringa fatay koy kata bade akabe kawaso du na e afamaay mol balante mansom atata e karnal ni ne ka karnal ya dibeti ko e ñindu e mi ala last request mo ñu wolé kawaso du ngay foy ñanta sonna foy ma ñanta sonna e karnal kay ko no wote keno la par le moral of the story mo minti wolam ko ay wo kordal min besoto ay motol min besoto ay kodol min besoto ay bay bula jam hani kawaso iman son yadu ngay foto ñenta min kela na position kan nene na politics nim ba kela ay ke respect because momo ye min fi wala ka falie ni press politics mi alon ko nen di rolam ka mol separate lam ka do yaro loke hani sira wo kilo molam bula le no woto ngam far respect nga na ñaaton ko respect na ñaaton ko fanaje bala fanye ni nga woken ko nata tugere pour na banko be yiru wa sot la be ñaato ta sot la ala baraka thank you tay nak jotaay bi liko waral moy ne ñu waxtaan soti wante halat ñu gis ne gambia dina dem ci kanam gambia nak su jage ñun la su yaako ñun la ñun gambia ci ndax president adama baro dafa am walam diko def ñun tam niñ am suñu wala diko def opposition su amut ci rew rew momu baaxu waye opposition dafa am lu mané ndax nga nek opposition di yaaha amun njeriñ nga nek opposition di defal sa rew mo opo njeriñ kon té ma ngay ñaax suma mbokki gambia ci ne gambia dëkk bu ndaw la gambia dëkk diina la gambia dëkk l'islam la gambia dëkk yermande la neñ ubi suñu xol yi ñu nekk bena 
ñu yéramanté ñu dimbalanté ñu fonkanté ñu wolowanté réew mi mëna dox su lolu am gambie du mëna dem té réew mi nañ fexé ñu xex fi corruption réew bu amé corruption réew momu tamit du dox ndax corrupt nek na lu nga xamné moy yaqa réew konté ñun gambiens yi comme niko président adama baro défé ni so gisé li nga xamanténé ni mu ngé yaq sa réew fexé lén yeen parti leader ci ak gambiens yépp ñu dajé ñu sét naka lañu sol fo problème bobu mo gën yow nga am lu la naxari nga né xaaral tay ma dem fajé ko social media amu ñeriñ ndax fi ku fi dem ci social media nga yaq gambia yow sa bop nga yaq because gambien nga ndax id card bi bena la konté dañ wara jël réew mi ñu boto ci gannaa président bi ñu défal ko fi adama baro nekkul force président fi président amna muy a jawara demna yaaya jamé nek na fi demna adama baro da fe jogo jogé because fi ku fi yalla tek rek dang fe tegu context ku fi yalla tek dañ ko wara nangul liko liko fi yalla tege yow tam ci la fi yalla tege ñu nangul la ko rew mi dem way so xexé adama baro yow tam baye sa xel né so so togé ñi xex la fi lo fi lebré rek lo lay lay fay konté nañ yëramanté ma ngi wax mr president né ko mu guest jigen ñi ndax rew mi jigen ñi ñoko amé su rew mi doxé jigen ñi la ak ndawi konté mr president ma ngi lay ñaax nga fatalé ko nga xalaat bu baax nga dimbalé jigen ñi jigen ñi sona néñ surtout jigen ñi nga xamanténé ni ñi ngay jaay ci bunti marché bi jigen ñi fu mu nekk lu nekk la ño dacc ci bunti marché bi konté mr president lolu ñu ngi la ko denk tay la yow la yalla denk ci place bi yow ya fi tok tay ya nekk ci place bi amuñ fenn fuñ mëna démé joy suñ problème budul ci yow konté suñ ñëwé joy la suñ problème bu gëné problème bobu nonu yow mr president nga def ci djégo sol fu ko ba gis na jigen ni gambie yi am nañ jamma konté ma ngé gërëm euh suma mbokk jigen ni yépp di gërëm yuut ci di leen ñaax rek né réew mi ñun ñepp ko bokka ñu moytu social media bi ah di ñaan yalla yalla musal ni ci suñ dekkandor yi nga xamantene ni ñi ngi euh nekk fi sénégal li leen dal yalla musal ci gambien ci konté ma ngé ñaan jamma ci gambi gambia di ñaanal jamma gambien ci di leen wax na leen ah wax dëgg neex yalla réew mi kenn mënu ko xar ñaar benno rek lañu mëna def rew mi dem suñ benno xu rew mi du dem jari gën def wa salam assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah i want to take this opportunity to commend the president for the initiation to have this national dialogue having taken that personally i feel very much honored to be given the task by my leader to represent the party in this very important task it appears is a replica history in the making in the 2016 coalition dialogue i was honored the team's task by our UDP flag bearer who is now the current sitting president to represent him in that dialogue leading to the signing of the coalition agreement when many thought that dialogue the process was a futile exercise i had the belief then it would be possible indeed it was possible if i am honored to be participating in another important dialogue of that nature i believe my personality and representation in that and now in this 
I am saying it is going to be possible. Honorable, uh, I'm sorry, Your Excellency and the Vice President, this dialogue, as earlier on alluded by the moderator, people ask why now? And he asks, why not now? Then I add, uh, it's better late than never. The moderator rightly alluded, uh, facing with the current realities, both national and sub-regional, there is a need uh, for this dialogue. And really, that is the situation. If we should say, why now? It could not have a better time, come at a better time than now. We are aiming to have the Gambia that we can all yearn and live proudly as Gambians. This was the anticipation in 2016. We are still yearning and standing by that to see that dream we had in 2016 is realized. Your Excellency, to have peaceful country that key stockholders, the politicians, our religious leaders, of course, in general, the citizenry are very important. In this process, all efforts must be done to ensure all are represented. I understand today is the launching where we are reflecting on the team. And also we'll have another day where we'll have broad participation, about 500 members. I would say we should not limit to that. We should go beyond that. Let it be a form of national consultation. When we have the National Preparatory Committee, I would not know whether the institution that represents the political parties is part of this committee. If not, it can be included. Then we tax this committee to do thorough national consultation, region by region. We should not limit to only the gathering that we'll have on the 16. It should go beyond that, so that all voices and all concerns are heard. Your Excellency, our cultural norms and values, the Gambia, we are always promoted that we are among the best in terms of culture and values. Upholding this, that should be an utmost concern. Many a time, it is our young folks, and I believe the way things are going we need to put our cultural norms and values to the knowledge of our young people. Honorable, uh, Your Excellency, if you go to our communities, usually we tend to get disputes here and there as a result of land management. We have in place what is called land commission. I'm not sure whether the Land Commission is functioning. If not, or if so, it is not as expected. If we want to do away with violence in our communities, the issue of the land, the policy around the land should be looked into. Your Excellency,
a hungry man is an angry man. Nowadays, people are hungry. And people, if they are hungry, they'll be angry. Food self-sufficiency, how that can be addressed, should be at utmost responsibility and concern. It is not only about management, but also about generation. How do we maximize our, products, our production base? That is what we can look into when our people are hungry and they become angry to silence them down. Your Excellency, Anti-Corruption Act is in place. We should have the political will and commitment in fighting against corruption. The Anti-Corruption Commission should be enforced and should not also come to be like the Land Commission. The sovereignty of the Gambia should not and must not be compromised. There must be discipline in our institutions and as civil servants, we should adhere to disciplinary rules. We should be committed to our work. I welcome the creation of the new ministry. I was thinking that when it comes, that aspect of indiscipline in our civil society will be addressed. But I'm yet to see any meaningful move towards that. And finally, Action speaks louder than voice. We are here, we launch for a commitment of what we call national dialogue to have peace and stability in this country. If we do this work, at the end we'll have reports, resolutions. More importantly, the implementation of the outcome of this engagement. Your Excellency, people will say, we have commissions, and the commission will have reports. But implementation of these reports are usually the problem. Will this uh, the dialogue also will not follow the same pattern? Political tolerance above everything. You are the sitting president. Those who are unfortunate and their parties, they are the opposition. Our role is to serve as workdogs. Criticize your programs, your policies, whether you will see that to be constructive or otherwise, we may defer, but that's our role. Your position is not to be having any ill feeling against anyone, against such criticisms, but to defend your policies and your programs. Don't see any opposition as your enemy, but rather your opponents, but rather the same brothers and sisters. When I say this, I conclude. I did send a political message to my president. And I'm not sure whether he had that message. If I've been given this opportunity, I want to recollect that message. If you are on state functions, take consideration what appears to be state functions, state issues are addressed. We leave aside the political issues. And I want to recollect that. I feel very troubled when I see my brother making very uncomfortable statements against my father, who is his father. I feel very comfortable. I feel very comfortable if I see my father criticizing and my brother defending his program, I feel very comfortable, but very uncomfortable if it should be the otherwise. I'm appealing. The sonly and the fatherly relationship should exist 
for peaceful coexistence between the two leadership. I thank you. I just want to highlight a few things um, which you will see uh, fostering the key, the message we should leave here with must float around fostering an open and inclusive dialogue with the hope to create an environment where diverse political perspectives flourish in a responsible manner. There are key words there. Participation, the, uh, the, uh, the, the political diverse, and of course, that it flourishes. Well, if you have a garden, people who have gardens at home, you know what you do with your watering can in the morning. The water you give to those plants is what you are asked to give here so that this environment can flourish, so that uh, responsibility is taken on for the best outcomes. But of course, many people rush to cloak dialogue with a bent on speaking and talking. But the essence, really, for a successful appropriation of what was being said or spoken leans heavily on listening and hearing. Because listening promotes understanding. And therefore, responses become productive when we understand what we are saying, rather than just talking for the sake of talking. So we are going to use that as um, a late motif, the background to which we will approach our further discussions. And the, uh, Mr. Charles, John Charles has told you, emphasized the seven thematic groups, the, the six, six yeah. yes, to be facilitated, of course, with civil society being central to that decision, and then the five resolutions to be consolidated upon which the dialogue, the discussion will now take place. And with the intention that all the things that have been covered here, even in the, we, we even see it in the prayers that we are offered here. The inclusivity, the Imam, talk, the imam mentioned the, 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 the Christian contact. And the prayers also said, talked about the oneness of Gambians. So you see, it's not only at the political level, it's also in the, in the, in, in, in the religious psyche that we should promote this dialogue. So here we are, and um, in the remarks of His Excellency, you will see how, ex how well it was taken that this sort of a discussion is absolutely necessary. So that the political parties have been brought together is a good sign of what will be guided to discuss on uh, the next one is on uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yes, it's on Wednesday. Then you will begin to hear all of what we've heard today in concrete group discussions when these thematic issues are being dealt with by close groups so that whatever comes out of that will now go to the next session where the, those will be reviewed so that we crystallize all the main issues that have come out of this discussion so that we have a, a body of, of, of concepts that will serve to, um, to answer the questions we, we have come here to do. So it's a phenomenal partnership with government and civil service and here we are uh, with, uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the government and the civil society, and here we are trying to consolidate that so we come out with a concrete understanding. We have heard political, political statements. Now let us all boil that down to people statements and people issues. I think that can safely summarize what we've heard here today. And when we go to the group work on Wednesday, then we will see how arguments are made in the individual um, uh, uh, topic areas, like women, like youth, like uh, 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 hunger, and so forth and so on. So this is kind of general, a testing ground for what will happen on Wednesday and beyond. I thank you very much. Um, I'm Nukukofuwa, Ms. Oneke President. 
fonga andak nit ñi so ñëwé fi ya nit ñi la ñoo la téru so ñi bi nit ñi ñoo la gugé bon nak amul kën ko xamné da ngay wax né da nga kom suma yaay ni mu koy waxé doxi nak xoram xoram dis lo nak suy dox ni moy def ni lay def bopa bi suma bopa suma bopa bon nak nay nek ben ñu boto ci gannaaw his excellence president adama baro ñu def dialogue bi lo xamné lu am jëriñ la yalla mu ñu waccal barke sutura jamo ak benno ñi jitu depuis 2016 ñu ngi ñaan yalla ak ñi leen top yeb yalla leen yalla may jëna du fu daawus his excellence adama baro lima koy ñaanal toujours nit ñi xamuñ dañu wax ne man ma adama baro la man nekkal wa adama baro man suma rew la nekkal nekkal ba benn political party political party ñep man rew bi la li fiñ rew mi nak su fekke ne his excellence adama baro mom lañ taaj man li alquran wax mom lay dundé mom lay jëfo né nak ku ñu yalla taay dañ ko jappalé su sa waxtu joté nga tok kenen jappalé la ma ngay ñaan yalla nak di jégalu ci wax bi da wax neexut suma fu waxé lo xamné juub ci man la lo xamné juub na nak ci yalla la am légui his excellence adama sa baro ma nga ñaan mbotu bi da ngay gëna yaatul muna la dimbalé ma ma ñewal la mbotu yokal la mbotu bi nga bot ñepp xalaat ñepp amal ñepp yermande boole ñepp ci liggey bi su boba rek wagon bi nga ubi moto bi nga taaj ñepp dinañ ci hecc ñepp dinañ ci gis sen bopa yalla yalla def jamm ci ci gambia ak senegal ak rew yi ci desseb allahumma salli ala muhammad the final relance will be a very short and a very simple one it is an honor for me to receive all these political leaders today at the state house and i think today we are making history we are making history in the sense that i don't think in our records we have ever organized something like this where you have government and opposition sitting together to dialogue I have always been saying it all the countries that have developed they are all peaceful countries even at our level the compounds that progress and develop they are all peaceful communities regions cannot develop without peace and we cannot achieve peace in our country if we are not talking to each other we must be talking to each other and the best way talking to each other is to interface and today my team and the civil society and the people that have given the responsibility to coordinate this dialogue I have seized the opportunity to thank them for all the hard work. I thank them. <laughs> We've been patriotic Gambians. Mr. Jones talked about criticism. We are always happy when we are criticized because you always help us in running this country. it can always help us when we are discussing about this country it can always help us when we are drafting policies how to make this gambia a better country for all of us and i think this dialogue have also given me an opportunity to meet my political colleagues meet some of my friends that i miss so long abla jamme is among them i think since after the 2021 election i haven't seen him 
So I think I will organize uh, such a meeting again in a very short time so that it will give me opportunity <laughs> to meet some of my friends. You talk about a lot of things. Civic education, cost of living, land management, security, national unity, rule of law. These are all important as far as democracy is concerned. We are a young democracy. We are doing everything possible to build a strong foundation of democracy going forward. And we are open. Our doors are open. My wife spoke just now, Fatma Tambajang. We always talk. She's still having my number. So my doors are open. If you want us to discuss about this country, I am always available. I have no other work now. I was doing business, but now I'm not doing business. Now I'm running a country. That means I have to listen to the people and I have to open my door so that I will discuss with Gambians who have ideas and opinions for us to move this country forward. I listened to my brother, Allah Jidab. Politics is a game. It's a game, but it's a game that is to move your community or your society forward. When we are criticizing also, let us have genuine criticism to the government. With that genuine criticism, it can make a huge difference for our people. On that note, I thank all of you. According to records, they say we have about 19 political parties. 19 political parties. I don't know whether the IEC chairman is here. <laughs> you might be able to confirm that. <laughs> but one thing is a takeaway in this. We are very happy that all politicians that, that we are invited, they are all here, either through their party leaders or they are represented. So that means it's 100% respond. Then this is positive for the Gambia. This is positive for our unity. This is positive, and this can make a big change as far as our political landscape is concerned. On that note, I seize this opportunity to thank all of you for coming. Be assured that all what you have said here is noted. Our technicians are here. It will be noted and we will dialogue on it and see how best we can put some of your concerns into our policies and make sure that it will benefit the Gambian people because we are all representing the Gambian people. I thank you. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world this microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151.
or visit Yona head office at Thipa Garage, Bakote, or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you.